Hi everyone. I'm going to share a book with you today called Look What I Did With a Leaf. It's the perfect time of year to share this book with you because we are in fall and the leaves are changing colors and well you'll find out why it's such a perfect time. So I'm going to go through the book Look What I Did With a Leaf. Have you ever really looked at leaves? In the fall, they shout, look at me, with crunchy, crackling noises in bright reds, orange, and yellows. And then one day in the spring, you suddenly notice everything is lush and green because the leaves have pushed out all over the trees. <clears throat> it's wonderful, wonderful to see so many leaves at once, but such bounty keeps us from taking the time to stop and look at just one. Making animals with leaves is an adventure that will open your eyes to each leaf's special beauty. So as you can guess, we're going to be making animals or creatures from leaves. The first step in making leaf animals requires a few steps on your own, outside. Take a bag or a shoebox and go on a leaf hunt. Leaves are all around you in backyards, parks, and along city streets. Once you start looking for them, you won't be able to stop finding them. Look for leaves that are different sizes, different shapes, and different colors. What season is this? Taking a look at this elephant here. Spring and summer. In the spring and summer, most of the leaves you will find are green. But as you'll see, there are lots of shades of green in nature. Look at all the different shades of green in the leaves used to make this elephant. So over here, I skipped over the do's and don'ts. Let's go back to it. Do remember to look for very tiny leaves. You'll need them for eyes, nose, beaks, and feet. Do take time after your walk to rinse and press the leaves. If you want to, if you wait too long, your leaves will become brittle and curled. That's a really important step for making leaf creatures or leaf animals. Once you get your leaves and you find them, you take a heavy book or phone book or encyclopedia or whatever, you put the leaves in between the pages separated from each other and you press them and you leave them in there well you really only have to leave them overnight don't hurt the trees and bushes taking a leaf won't hurt anything but avoid breaking twigs and branches don't take leaves off trees that are on private property without getting permission but do have fun with your collecting in autumn if it is autumn, you will have a rainbow of leaf colors from which to pick and choose. Although evergreen trees stay green all year round, the leaves of deciduous trees put on quite a flashy show before they fall to the ground. Training your artist's eye. By combining nature's bounty of color in new and creative combinations, you can bring your animals vividly to life. Contrast. Contrast is an important technique to use. Do you see how the owl's eyes, bright yellow eyes, stand out against the deep green of his body? Yellow and green are contrasting colors because they are so different from each other. Find strong contrasting colors and you will see how nature gives us the same reds and browns and leaves as it does in animals' fur and birds' feathers. Artist note. Have you thought about where you're going to sit when you work on your leaf animals? It may not seem important, but it is. All artists like to have a space in which they can create. Here are some things that will help you be a better leaf artist a large flat surface to work on and a comfortable seat, a place where you can leave your unfinished art safe from things like breezes and babies. 
and sometimes it's just nice to have some peace and quiet. Shape and size. As you collect your leaves, you'll notice that they come in all different shapes and sizes as well as different colors. So take a look here from the different shapes and the different trees that they come from. They come round, oval, long, heart-shaped, and star-shaped. They're even uh, lobed leaves that look like they were cut with scissors. When you see these different leaves, think about how you can use them when you assemble your leaf animal. Saw-edged leaves capture the feathers and texture of a rooster's body. So this is a saw-edged edged leaf. The lobed leaves used for this frog's feet look very realistic. Long, narrow leaves work well for this fox's legs. Size, in addition to colors and shapes of the leaves you collect, you also have to consider their size. The large leaves used to make this cow are perfect for an animal's head and body. Smaller leaves can be then used for the animal's facial features, like the nose and eyes on this mouth. Artist note. Some artists like to have all their materials very carefully arranged before they begin a new work of art. If you think you might be that sort of artist, you might organize your piles by arranging the leaves according to size or by separating a pile of round leaves into those with smooth edges and those with toothed edges. Stop when you think you'll be able to easily find what you want. Layering. Once you have collected leaves of all colors, shapes, and sizes, you can layer them to create animals that need a more complex design. The different colors and sizes in this collage blend together to form the flowing, majestic look of the lion's mane. Famous for its fine plumage, the peacock requires a careful choice of colorful contrasting leaves, layered or I call overlapping, to highlight its brilliant tail. Make a scene. Don't limit yourself to only one animal at a time. Once you have some experience making leaf animal, animals, you may want to try some, something on a larger scale, like this underwater scene. Oop, artist note. Many artists need reference materials. That means they need something to look at while they are working. Some artists take photographs of people in different poses and draw from the photos. This helps them to capture the image they want. You might find it useful to have reference material for your leaf animals. Look in magazines, toys, catalogs, greeting cards, and picture books. The picture doesn't have to be of a real animal. It could be a cartoon or a toy. Maybe there is an animal character that you want to try to make, like Barbar or Curious George. Never rip anything out of a magazine without getting permission, of course, and your librarian can show you how to copy a picture from a book. Preparing the leaves. This is probably a really important part. When you get home, clean the leaves you've collected by soaking them in a bowl of warm water for a few minutes, not very long. Blot them dry and blot them dry between two pieces of toweling. Then place the leaves on two pieces of newspaper. Take care that the leaves do not touch each other because the parts that overlap will not dry properly. You may also want to trim any stems that are particularly thick, cover the leaves with another piece of newspaper and put something heavy on top. Well that's very similar to what I suggested by putting them inside of a heavy book. Both ways work great. Telephone books or big dictionaries work well. It will take about a week for the leaves to be ready to work with. By then you sh they should be flat, stiff, and dry. 
Well, I did not wait a week for mine. I put mine in overnight and took them out to, to work with. So that will be just fine if it just spends one night. Assembling the animals. Here are the materials you're going to need in addition to your leaves. Cardboard, the kind from the dry cleaner or laundry with one or two, one white side is best. Otherwise, paste, glue, colored construction paper onto cardboard. Wait a minute. I don't think the cardboard thing is what you're going to need. Here are the materials that I suggest. Of course, you want to have a work surface where um, you can work safely, so if you get glue on it, it's not a problem. You're going to need glue. Now, I worked with Mod Podge. If you don't have this, Elmer's glue works just as well. Now, to apply the glue to a leaf, I use a paintbrush. So I put it a little Elmer's glue or Mod Podge, put the glue on the back of the leaf, paint it on, and then put it down. Um, they are also suggesting cotton swabs to clean up any edges. The edges dry clear anyways, so I wouldn't worry about cotton swabs. All right, now putting it all together. I'm not going to read all of these uh, pages here, but you can clearly see that when you are working on a particular animal, how you start with the big shape first, adding details, and this is talking about the leaf life cycle. And these are some of the field guides for the different types of leaves that you'll come across. Now I took a walk through Durand Eastman Park when I was working on mine. And in another video, I'm going to show you how I went about creating my bird. Now, my bird isn't completely done. I have to go back out later today and find some leaves that will work for bird legs. So maybe something small, I don't know, like this. And see, that one has a tear in it, so I have to find a different one. But hopefully you get the idea. I want you to have fun. Enjoy this. I had a good time. I'm going to make more leaf animals myself. And when you are through, if you are a remote learner, all you have to do is take a picture of your finished work and send it to me. If you are a hybrid learner, I would like you to bring in your actual uh, leaf animal into school so I can hang it up and display these awesome creations. I hope you have a good time. And if you have a chance, check out the book Look what I did with a leaf. Lots of good ideas in here.